here. We're going to worship Jesus together. You can stand to your feet. Let's put our hands together like this. Come on, we're going to declare that there is joy in the house of the Lord, that there's joy in this house today. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. Our God, He holds a victory. Come on. say we're here to bring you praise, to bring you honor, that there's none like you. You alone deserve all the glory. We give you honor. There's no 
Jesus, like yours, Jesus.
Jesus, we say there is no one more holy. We stand in wonder in all of who you are, that there is no other name besides your name. There is no other God besides you. And today we lift you high. We declare the truth of Jesus Christ in this place. We love you. We worship you in Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen, amen. Hey, welcome. Welcome to Lifeway. My name is Joanna. Here at Lifeway, we exist so that you would know Christ, that you would know this man, Jesus, that you would experience connection with one another that you discover your purpose, why God created you, and you go from this place into every place and impact the lives around you for eternity. You can take a seat and we have some videos for you. Welcome to Lifeway Church. The most convenient way to access all that we offer is with the Church Center app. If you're new to Lifeway or taking next steps in your relationship with God, tap the Connect Card link. First time guests joining us in person are welcome to stop by the Welcome Center for a gift. If you'd like to request prayer or share a testimony, tap the Prayer and Praise Card link. Pastoral care is also just a few taps away when you choose the care team request. Weekends get busy around here, and we don't want anyone to feel lost in the crowd. Join an impact team and sign up for a group to serve and connect with others. There's a wide range of teams to serve on and groups to join. Groups at Lifeway meet throughout the year and cover numerous topics, interests, and stages of life. Prioritize connection and get plugged in. Interested in giving a donation to Lifeway? We have a number of options for you. Cash and check donations can go in an offering envelope. Give online by using the website or the Church Center app. You can even give with a text message to the number 84321. Our system will reply with steps to get you started. We love families around here and understand the difficulty of handling little ones in the service. To balance the needs of young families and others joining us this weekend, we ask that you step out into the lobby if your child is getting restless. There are activity bags available at the Welcome Center and services are streamed to the lobby and nursing mother's room. Our ushers can point you in the right direction. Thank you for helping us make this service enjoyable for those in the room and watching online. My favorite thing about being a mom is that God chose me to be Noah's mom. He chose us for each other. Just the passion I had to pour into my children and give them the best foundation I could give them. My favorite thing about being a mother is just getting a glimpse into their heart every day, just um, hearing their hopes and dreams and their visions and um, just getting to experience them as they learn who God created them to be. Has motherhood been anything like you expected? <laughs> no. Um, a four boy mom here. I liken it as to having caffeinated squirrels in an unfenced jungle gym or ninja course. Things that have maybe caught me more by surprise are just the mental load, keeping track of like everything that's going on in your head. It's probably not good to have expectations for things like motherhood. Um, but I just found through it all, like God knows what's best for us and our family. Who inspires you to be a better mother? I would actually say my kids, because when you look at them, you're like, wow, like they deserve the best of me. And you realize very quickly that like, you don't have that in you to like give them. So it's really made me rely on God. Women who are struggling to become a mother, because I went through infertility for years and being able to be a mom is such a blessing so I don't want to waste that blessing and I want to be the best mom I can be. Definitely Jesus. Um, the Holy Spirit has a great way of just convicting me. I'm just so grateful that I have that helper in my life. My advice would be to have a community of other moms. To have other moms be able to lift you up when you need it or you to lift them up is just as rewarding. You can form your ideas of what you think things will look like, but be prepared that you need to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in motherhood and not have such a set expectation of what it should look like, because it really is different. And nobody, no parenting book and no podcast can prepare you fully for motherhood. 
vamos a hacer lo mejor que podemos pero y vamos a tratar de llegar a la perfección, pero realmente no vamos a ser ni perfecta madre ni una perfecta persona. Pero de lo mejor de ti, siempre de lo mejor, porque te vas a sentir orgullosa de ti misma. Just take time to sit with your kids. You know, I, the laundry is always calling. There's always dishes in the sink at our house. And yet, I still have to take time and just sit with my kids because those are the times they're going to remember. Good morning, and on the heels of that video, can we just give a good shout and a clap for all the moms? Happy Mother's Day. I wanna say welcome to all our guests, and you're here for a very special occasion because I'm sure you guys have taken notice to all these blessings and gifts from God up here. Aren't they amazing? Aren't they beautiful? Yes? Woo, we hopefully have some uh, proud grandparents and others in the room supporting these little ones. You are here on Mother's Day, and I want to recognize that for some of you, this might be an emotional time. Maybe like you relate to the person in the video that shared about, you're still trying to conceive, still trying to become a mom. Or maybe you're like me and your mom's no longer here to celebrate. So we just want to acknowledge that we know that this is going to be an emotional time, but we also want to celebrate motherhood we want to celebrate life here at lifeway and so happy mother's day to all of you moms we're here to celebrate these parents that are making a commitment this is called a child dedication and we see from a, a person in the bible hannah who had trouble conceiving when she finally got pregnant she said this prayer to the lord she said I pray for this child, and God gave me what I asked for, and now I have dedicated him to God. He is dedicated to God for life. Then and there, they worshiped God. And then we see also that Joseph and Mary, they brought Jesus to be dedicated in the temple, very similar to what these families are doing here today. So I believe we see just a, a biblical example of what's happening. And so what is child dedication? Well, it's where these parents are taking a solemn moment to acknowledge their need for God and to say, I'm gonna make a commitment by the grace of God in our life to raise our children to know the Lord. And can I just say from a mom who did this five times, it's a beautiful thing when you begin to see the generational, when you get to see those children that you've dedicated to the Lord now dedicating their children to the Lord. And so this is very powerful, the commitment that they're making today. And so we wanna, we just wanna celebrate with you parents. And we think it's awesome. And if you guys wanna take a moment, you can turn to me. And I have some questions for you. So do you recognize your children as a gift from the Lord? If so, say, I do. Will you now dedicate your children back to the Lord who gave them to you with God's help? And will you bring them up, the, your children, in the instruction and the discipline of the Lord, making every reasonable effort with patience and love to build the Word of God, the character of Christ, and the joy of the Holy Spirit into their lives? If so, answer, I will. Do you commit with God's help to make, your regular, to make it your regular prayer that by God's grace your children will come to trust Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of their sins and eternal life? If so, answer, I do. Isn't that beautiful? All right, you can turn back and look at the congregation. Oh, how many of us know parenting isn't for the faint of heart? It's like a job, like nobody's business, but it's the most beautiful, honestly, most amazing privilege and honor God gives us. But I'm so thankful we don't do it alone. So congregation, for the community and the believers here at Lifeway, and for the family and friends that have come to support these parents, I have a question for you. Will the community of Lifeway Church, and for those that are here, support these families, embrace these parents, with the support, the encouragement, the prayer, that these children will know God's love and that by the grace of God in parenting, they'll have the joyful hope of God in their lives today and the days and the years to come. And if you're willing to be that support and to be those prayers for these people up here, do you mind just acknowledging, saying yes by standing up and saying we're here for you. And you can extend your hands and pastors, you can come forward and just begin to pray as I pray. I'm gonna pray one of my favorite um, verses over you parents. It's Deuteronomy 6, five through seven. I pray 
that you will love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength, your entire being, and that the words that Jesus commanded shall be written on your heart and on your mind, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, impressing God's precepts on their minds and penetrating their hearts with his truths and that you will speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road and when you lie down and when you get up. I thank you, Father, that you don't require us to do parenting alone. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, that the gift that he will be to these parents, I pray that they would be able to rely on you, Holy Spirit, in times of wondering, in times of struggles, in times of joys, that they give glory to you for your help and your assistance in parenting and raising these children to know you. And we bless them as this community of Lifeway, as friends and family. We bless these parents to raise these children and for them to live a life dedicated to the Lord. And everyone said in Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, parents, you can um, go back to your seats, yeah. Feel free to drop kids off at Children's Ministry if you want to bring them there. We have a certificate and a gift for you parents at the Welcome Center. So at the end of service, don't forget um, to stop by and pick those up. And thank you for all of you who are here to just be those witnesses to say, yes, we support you. We're here for you. So good. I love, I love to say that we believe in life at Lifeway. God has blessed us richly, and we just acknowledge these gifts and these blessings from God. They're just so, so beautiful, so awesome. Well, you guys are here um, as we're going to be beginning a series called Who Am I? And so we have a little video here to kick off that series, so if you want to pay attention to the screens. Our identity can be distorted by many sources, family, culture, entertainment, the church, But beyond our past, our circumstances, and our self-doubt is our identity in Christ. We are created by God and empowered by His Spirit. We can live with confidence and purpose as His children. Let's revisit scripture to answer the question, who am I? Welcome back, I feel like I need to say. (laughs) And to those of you who joined us online, please just take a moment to chat and say, hey, I'm here, and if you're a mom, shout out, say happy Mother's Day to those who you know. All right, well, I have a question, but before we dive into that, I have an announcement. And it's a very important announcement, because as you guys saw, we filled up this whole front, and this, are, this is our third um, you know, service today, and so God is blessing us, and we acknowledge that blessing, but you, how many of y'all know that when you just outgrow the car, you outgrow the car, or when you outgrow the house, you outgrow the house, and so here at Lifeway, we are needing to expand, and so we have a student center, which is a space that we're just waiting and, and wanting to dive in to doing the reconstruction and everything else to make more space for our children and our youth here at Lifeway, and so we have a very generous donor, that was willing to say, hey, I'll do a matching fund. So this is the matching fund for the student center is gonna run till the end of May. So that is why I'm making this announcement. If you guys believe in what God's doing in this, the youth and that the, they're our next generation, let's pour, um, let's pour some seed into them. And so again, if the Lord puts on your heart, we would love for you to be able to give to that. All right, and can we just pray? Father, I am so grateful and thankful for the blessings that you do pour out each and every one of us right here. We acknowledge, we acknowledge that you are the the gift giver and that you give good gifts and you bless your children and we thank you for all the goodness, all the kindness, all the love that you pour out on us as your children. And we wanna be father vessels that are poured out where others experience your love through us. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would impact our hearts and our minds right now. Give us the attentiveness to what you're going to personally speak to each and every one of us through this message. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. So who am I? Really? Who am I? Have you ever had that thought? Who am I becoming? Where will my life lead me? Who am I meant to be? Who am I? Well, I know I have wrestled with this question. There's no handbook for life, right? And I think we have so many influences all around us 
they're wanting to answer that question for us. If you stop and you think about media, songs, how about culture, friends, family, we think about the sources of the influences that come at us to dictate our identity. And I believe we're going to take the next few weeks to just unpack the various ways that I believe God answers that very question to who we are. And so today we're going to dive in and we're going to go way, 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 way back to our original design, to creation, to the beginning. Yes, we're going all the way back there. And I want to take you guys to a time where God was creating the heavens, the earth. He goes on to say in Genesis 1.24 that he began to create the animals according to their kind. And then we come to Genesis 1.27 where he says, let us make man in our image. Have you ever pondered that we are made in the image of God? Incredible, right? I think King David really sums it up really well where he says in Psalms 139, 13 through 14, he says, for you created me in the innermost parts. You wove me in my mother's womb and I will give thanks to you because I am awesomely and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. And that's what I want to talk to you today. That you, you are awesomely and wonderfully made. So I have a little participation here that I'm looking for from you guys. I'm not going to force you. You don't have to, but it's an invite that I think will really bring the big idea of this message a little bit closer to home, and that is if you are here and you have one of these devices that we call a cell phone, if you could pull that out for me. I know, I know, this goes contrary to maybe even if y'all are like me and you grew up in my house, I'm like at the dinner table, put those cell phones away. And so maybe your mom and dad have taught you, you know, put those cell phones away while we're in church unless you use it for your Bible and other things. But if you don't mind, take out your um, cell phone and then there's this handy dandy little button on there that shows a little camera, pull that up for me, and then flip that screen around till you see lovely you. And now, the group participation is, I'm asking, if y'all don't mind, is to take a selfie. So take a picture of yourself, and maybe another, and another. I don't know, is it number five is, you know, does the charm, you get that picture of yourself? All right. Now, I'm going to do something, but, but that for some of you might be kind of painful, but I'm going to ask you to look at that picture. Look at that image. What are some of the thoughts that come to your mind as you look at that image? I know some thoughts that are hitting me right now. Wow. If only that person in that, that picture was 10 pounds, 15 pounds, keep going, lighter, you know? Or I sit there and go, oh, I really do have all those wrinklies and, and aging things happening. Yep, yep. What about you? What are some thoughts that are hitting you? You can kind of whisper it to your, your neighbor. Yep. Yeah. What are your thoughts? What are your feelings as you're looking at that, that image? And I wonder, I just wonder if the feelings and the thoughts that are hitting you right now line up with what God's thoughts and his feelings are towards you when he sees you. Because we just heard that he says you are awesomely and wonderfully made. He loves you. So let's go back to that original design and what was transpiring and happening in the garden. So we see that God created man and he said, I, I made them, I made man in our likeness, in our image. He declared it. 
And so one of the things that God gave Adam and Eve to do is he said, I'm giving you this garden. I want you to work it. That was one of my favorite lines as a parent saying, hey, if God gave them the garden to work, he put you here to work. But um, that's just a freebie for the parents out there. And so I, 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 I see that God gave them the, the whole land to till. He gave them the authority. But he just said, I have one request. I'm just asking that you don't eat from this particular tree over here. They were living the life, man. Y'all, God showed up and they had walks and talks with God. Can't get any better than that, right? Yet, a couple chapters later, we read that pring, Satan shows up. And he feeds this little statement to Eve and he says this to her. For God knows that on the day that you eat from that, your eyes will be opened and you will become like God knowing good and evil. Did anybody catch anything there? Did you catch just what transpired? I see that immediately Satan came to make them think that they were lacking something that they already were. God had already told them that they were made in his image, that they were like God. But Satan immediately said, oh no, God's holding back on you and, and you don't got it. You don't measure up. You still have lack. He is sneaky, right? But not so sneaky. He's pretty straight out there. What are the ways that Satan maybe doesn't show up in the garden, like what we read, but what are the ways that he shows up in your world, in your home, maybe even on this device, that he shows up with these same kinds of lies, whether through a social post, through a song that we hear, through a picture that we see in a magazine, from something our friends say to us or behind our backs. The Bible tells us that Satan is still, to this day right now, he is roaming the earth, like think of like a roaring lion, and it says he's seeking whom he can devour with his lies because he is a liar. That's his job. That's what he wants to do is just bring his lies to us like he did. So again, I ask you, what are the lies that he's feeding you? What were the thoughts and the feelings when you looked at your image that you immediately came to mind? Because some of those thoughts and those feelings, they actually have some trails that sometimes you can go way back to. And I'm just going to share a few that I think of when I look at my life and where some of these lies came into to my, my mind and to my heart. And so one was very subconscious. I was born number five. So I was the baby in my family, and I was a little different in that three out of the five siblings all have red hair, um, fair skin, and here came at the end this little blonde hair, blue eye, and we happened to live in California at the time too. And there was things that were said as a young child by siblings that I don't think were even ever intentional. So I always say that in case my, my siblings ever hear this message. But things that were comments made like jokes, but things like, you're the adopted one. Why does your life have to be so easy? Because I had siblings that had to deal with acne and being bullied and never gonna be the, you know, uh, change any color from, from white to white. You know, that's just when your fair skin is just, there's no, there's no tanning in, in that, that zone. And so I remember the comments that were made, the things that were just subtle jokes, things said, that made me almost feel like I felt bad for who God created me to be. I almost felt like I needed to excuse the fact that I didn't face the same trials and tribulations that my siblings faced. And maybe some of you relate to that. Maybe your world is that you have maybe a sibling that was born with a handicap or a disability, and you can almost feel guilty that you don't face the same struggles or the things that they, they have incurred. But that was one of the things that was just very subconscious, but I realized like I almost felt like I just needed to feel bad for who I was. 
And then, take you fast forward to when I was five. At that time, um, my parents were older when they had me, and there was this actress that was very popular at the time, and her name was Shirley Temple. She was this cute little girl that had curly hair and cute dimples, and my mom just locked on to saying, isn't curly hair so cute? So she proceeded to take me to the beauty schools where they practice, you know, what I'm talking about. <laughs> For any of my beauticians, you, you got this, okay? But, but bottom line is, you know, it was cheaper to go to the beauty school. So I remember for hours and hours sitting there while they would put a perm in my hair. And if y'all haven't noticed, I've been born with straight stick, you know, you know, hair that is straight as a stick. And so over and over, my childhood was growing up with curls because it was, curls was better than straight. And it's interesting, I had someone come after the service for first service say, I was born curly hair and all I, all I ever wanted was straight. So, you know, I know, we face these things. And I don't think in any way that my mom meant evil. She really loved me. She was really good about speaking kind words over me. And, but it's just one of those subtle things of thinking, I don't measure up. I don't have what I, I should have or what I could be better with having curly hair. It might seem so you know, minor might seem, but these are little things. These are little things that attack our identity that we just want to acknowledge. And whatever it has hit you as I'm sharing, I want you just to think about it, all right? And then fast forward to sixth grade. I'm in sixth grade, I'm coming out of gym class, and this is how I know when words can bring trauma because I can take you back to when I was 11, 12 years old and I can remember where I was standing, what the building looked like, and what the words that were spoken over me were. But this boy looked at me and he said, you are so prude. Now here's what's kind of funny. I didn't even know what the word meant. <laughs> I just knew the way he said it was like, that must be something bad. And immediately I felt like something was wrong with me. Not realizing until I was a teenager and older that that was really the enemy coming to attack my identity of my purity and my innocence of things that I didn't have a need to know. That should have been celebrated. But that's not what Satan does. He comes to make us think that we are lacking. Fast forward to ninth grade. And in ninth grade, I'm on the bus having conversations. We're in the back where you kind of turn towards the aisle so you can all see each other. And we're just conversing. And all of a sudden, in ninth grade, this boy looks at me and he says, did anyone ever tell you that your smile's kind of like the Joker smile? I was like, no, and now just to get it over, I'm going to smile so y'all can just like see. Okay, now that that's done. That like crushed me. Can you imagine? All I could uh, think of was all that I knew to like associate with the Joker was this Batman movie that come out, very dark, and the guy has a scary face and this like what I would call like evil smile. And so I just got my identity associated with something not great, not awesome, but pretty dark. And so of course, what was the enemy trying to do? He was trying to take what the Bible talks about, having a bush over our light. He was trying to snuff out my joy, trying to take out who I was meant to carry through my smile, through my face. Go on a little further in life. I remember just praying for people at church, and I stirred the pot with a person, and they ended up saying, you're just a Jezebel. Now, maybe you guys don't even know what that is, but in the Bible, she was the wife to a king and was very, we would know her as evil and manipulative and, and not someone that you want someone to liken you to. And I wish I could tell you that I was only called that once, but I was called it again another time later in my life. Can I tell you, I think it was an attack against the leadership and the call in my life and trying to make me think that I was trying to be something that I wasn't. And it's always good. Don't get me wrong. We need to check ourselves. When people bring out things or say things, it's okay to have humility that even if God is using someone who's not got their heart in the right spot, I just want to take a moment to say it's good to check things in and ask the Lord. But at that time, I knew that what transpired was I had prayed something that was a heart revealed, and they were not happy with what, what God was pointing out in their life, and so they came and they attacked me and my identity. And I remember the best thing, this is why we need the body, this is why as you were witnessing for these parents and just saying, we're going to be here for you, I remember, because again, I was in my early 20s when that happened, and I had a bishop just come up and he saw me crying in the back of the sanctuary, he put his arm over me and he was like, it's okay, that's not who you are, and he had to just, you know, get me back in a right place with my identity, but these attacks, 
these things come at us and want to speak lies. What about you? What are some of those lies that he's fed you, whether subconsciously, whether consciously, whether through people that you should have been able to trust? What are those lies that the enemy has attacked you with? See, I believe Satan is coming even now to some of you in this room, and his lies are getting a little more blatant just a little more bold. Lies such as, you weren't even born the right gender. If that's you, I just want to say that's not true. You are awesomely and wonderfully made. just want to identify these lies that he's coming at us, because he is bold. But I'm so grateful that Jesus can identify with what we've walked through because Jesus had a moment when he was on earth as God's son that he was getting baptized by John the Baptist. And he had a pretty supernatural experience and encounter where God the Father came and spoke out of heaven and said, this, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Pretty cool, right? That's a pretty good stamp of identity on your life. But even Jesus not a little bit longer that he was sent out into a time in the wilderness that Satan shows up. Sound familiar, just like in the garden? Satan shows up. And one of the very first things that he, he says to Jesus, he says, if you are the son of God. Right there. He comes with his, you're not that. You're lacking. You're not really nothing new, right? So Jesus can even identify with his identity being attacked. And I believe the reason Satan fears our identity is because he knows that when we know who we are, we know why we're here, and we know what we're meant to do. And so that terrifies him. So he comes with everything he's got to try and keep us in a swirl, in a vertex of only focusing on what we think we're lacking, who we're not, when in reality, we've been given. God has already declared it. He's already spoken who we are. And you have a designer. He's made you. He's made your designer. He's made specifically the way you are. And, and Satan will continue to come and question your identity, your, your specific makeup. So there are two things that I see from the life of Jesus that he did when he was facing off with the devil. And I believe it'll be a significant, significant um, difference for us when other voices come to try and speak to our image and try and shape our life that if we do these two things. You ready? We just need to believe who God says we are. You, you need to believe who God says you are. There's this... Um, moment in Matthew 16, 13, where Jesus asked his disciples a question, and he says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, well, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he says to them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said to him, you are the Christ. Do you know why I believe Jesus could ask that question, why he asked that question? I believe because he knew the answer to that question already. Do you? Do you know the answer to that question, who am I? There are voices that have shaped who you've become because you listen to them. But God's desire is that his voice and the answer to that question would be the only one that matters. That that's the only answer you're looking for. Because Satan wants to neutralize, he wants to paralyze you with his lies. Like that you're not enough, or that you're too much. Because some of us here have heard either on the both sides of that. You know, even jokingly, some of my family would be like, yeah, get all you and your sisters, you guys are, you know, a handful. And so we can start to be like, okay, I'm too much. Or, 
You know, when people say, you're special, but they don't mean special. You know, we, we can hear these lies. We can have people say, you just don't measure up. And Jesus can identify with these kinds of lies being thrown at him in the day in, day out walk of his life. Do you guys know that people looked at Jesus and said, you're a glutton. Then they, others looked at him and they said, you're a wine bibber. We know you. And then they said, you're demonized. And then at one point someone said, you're a liar. See, he had the enemy throwing fiery darts at his identity. But what is so cool is like we see that he knew the answer. He knew who he was. So when those lies came to attack his identity, they were like rubber balls, just boom, boom, bouncing off of him. And guess what? That's what God wants for all of us in this room. He wants that when Satan shows up, that those lies just boom, bounce off of us. So number two, I believe if we embrace the work of God's spirit in us, like 2 Corinthians 5.17 tells us that therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away and see the new has come. So what does this look like in practical application? Because I'm all about that. I'm like, okay, yep, yep, um, you're hitting some nerves here. I am seeing, I am feeling some of these lies that are, are stuck in me. And what's it going to look like when you wake up tomorrow morning? Because if Satan showed up to Jesus, and he showed up, I got news for all of us here. He's going to show up to you tomorrow morning, maybe tomorrow night, the next day, the next day. And the Bible tells us we don't fight against flesh and blood. So unfortunately, there are times that his lies will come through people. His lies will come through the spheres of influence that Satan has. It says the things that he can influence here on the world. And so what are we going to do when those lies come and when they show up? We want to embrace the work of the Spirit, what God says versus what the enemy says. And so in a very practical way, this is what it would look like for me. If I woke up and was like, you're fat, you're ugly, no one wants to look at you, we don't like you, and it might even be for some of you a self-hatred of, I wish I was never born. That depth of darkness that the enemy is trying to take you out, you know what you can say back to him? I am awesomely and wonderfully made. It's powerful, y'all. It's setting a new pathway for your identity. It's you saying, I'm not identified by that, no way. The Bible talks about this tent that we live in, whether you're a size zero or size you know, 15, it doesn't matter because bottom line, this thing, it's just a tent. It's just something we're, we're taking our host in right now. And someday, we'll get to have a new body the Bible talks about. And so all these things that he wants to distract us with, these lies that he wants to get us just in that vortex of believing what he speaks about the, the purpose in our identity, identity, we could shout with one truth, no, I'm awesomely and wonderfully made. And that's not prideful because you're just declaring what God has already spoken and said about you. What about the lie of, I'm not good enough? Look at everyone else. I don't measure up. Well, Isaiah 43, 4 says, you are precious. This is God saying this to you. He says, you are precious in my eyes. You are honored and I love you, says the Lord. Whew, that settles that argument, right? You are enough. You matter. You have value. I love that the one verse tells us that Jesus has our names tattooed on the palms of his hand. I'm like, anybody know that you're only going to tattoo something on your body that you really care about, right? He cares about you. That's the depth of how much he loves you. What about the lie of I'm, cap I'm never going to be capable of change? I'm just who I am. This is just who I am. That's just so wrong. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. But the struggle is real. I'm not going to neglect that. I remember there was, it was probably year 15 in my marriage that my poor husband looked at me. And he was like, I think you're just always going to be this critical. And he wasn't saying it in a harsh way. He was saying it almost in a like, I think I need to just accept this is who you are so I can keep going in my journey with you. And I remember going, that's not who I want to be. And all of a sudden I realized I needed to identify that's not the character of Jesus. That's not who he created me to be. 
But I had gotten caught in this thing of thinking, I can't change, or even worse, I began to justify that identity. Does anyone relate to this? Where I began to say, oh, it's really my prophetic edge. It's just I see things differently. I had my justifications. I had to say, wait a minute. What do I want my identity to be? What do I want to be known for? And so then I began to say, okay, God, I'm going to lean into you. I'm asking that you give me the power and the strength to make this change in my character and, and who I am. And I'm on that journey, you guys. I have not arrived, but I'm on that journey. What about for some of you? You're in a different season of maybe retirement, or you're feeling that aging, and maybe you're not feeling like you had the significance that you once did in your early 20s, 30s, 40s. Oh, well, this is a, a verse you guys can just grab a hold of. I have it printed because I just think it's a cool promise to hang on to that God says, Psalms 92, 12 through 14. It says, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord, and they will flourish in the courts of our God, and they will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. That's one of those things I just say, Lord, I wanna stay fresh for you. Whether this thing gets more wrinkles, more aging, you're not done with me because you declare that I can still bear fruit in my old age. So just break that lie. For some of you, for some of my ones that I wanna honor right now, you have run the race, but you're not done running the race. And God declares that he still has more fruit for you. So don't believe that lie. What about for some of you that you just feel like you're too young? This one, this thought, man, this hit me over and over. I'd be in a setting or I'd be in a situation, I'd be like, no one wants to see a 12-year-old walk up and pray for someone or say something over someone. And so I would just feel like, oh, nope, not yet. I'm too young, I'm too young. And I had to have people bring this scripture to me over and over. And they would say, 1 Timothy 4.12 says, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. But set an example for the believers in speech and conduct, love and faith and purity. And what about the lie of like, you're a failure? Or how about just the thought of, you just messed up one too many times, folks. God's done with you. Can I just say, that's not how it works. 2 Corinthians 12, 9, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. And so maybe you guys relate to this. I remember there was a time in my life, in my early 20s, that I, I divulged some information I shouldn't have and I really messed up and I really hurt someone. So I really did fail at being a confidant. I messed up and I felt so bad and I knew you can't go back, right? There's no redos. So the enemy will try and jump on these moments in our lives and he'll try to be like, mm-hmm, see, see what a screw up you are? Maybe you guys relate to these kind of lies he's thrown at you and your identity. You've just gone too far. But wait, what did we just read? His grace is so sufficient. So you know what I had to do? There'd be times I'd be driving down the road and he'd just start to begin to speak those little lies. See, see, you messed up. How could God want to use you? And I would just in tears and sometimes with that fighter, sometimes with that broken, but I would just say, no, nope. my God says he's forgiven me. That's why he went to the cross. That's why he shed his blood so that my sin can be washed and that I'm cleansed and I'm made new. Some of you just need to receive. But some of you are so broken to the core of your identity that you think no one loves you. Or how could someone love you? How could I be accepted? Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love towards us that while we were still sinners, and sinners just means any and every one of us that have missed the mark. We've missed where God intended for us to be. It's where we've done wrong. It says, yet while we were still sinners, he sent his son, Christ, to die for us. Can I have you stand to your feet? I want to invite you, if you are someone that as I've been sharing that your heart is being tugged on, the strings of your heart, because we all know, at least I know what it feels like when the Holy Spirit's doing something on the inside. I want to invite you just to close your eyes. 
And I want you to bring back up the emotions, the thoughts, the feelings that you had about yourself when you looked at that picture. And what are the thoughts and the feelings and, and the identity that the enemy has held out for you? What are those little lies that he has spoken? But God said, I didn't say that. And I don't say that now. Holy Spirit, we just pray that you would come with your truth. You come with your healing and speak to every person here. There might be someone in this room that you've never received Jesus, the Son of God who lived in heaven but came out of heaven to live on earth as a man, to live a sinless life, to die on a cross to pay for your sins, but not to just die, but he rose again so that you and I could have eternal life if you choose to have Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. If you recognize you've never made that choice, you've made, never made that decision to allow him to come and make you that new creation, if that's you, I just invite you to raise your hand and say, I want that. I don't want this identity that I've been lugging around. I don't want to feel like a failure. I don't want to feel like God doesn't love me or know me. I want to make that trade right now. If that's you, I want you to respond and just by a raise of hand say, yes, I want you. All right, you can put your hand down. And we're going to pray together as a family because some of you have maybe never prayed before. And this is how we talk to God just like Adam and Eve did in the garden. It says that he just walked with them. So we just say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me, for loving me, for choosing me. And I ask for your Holy Spirit to fill me with his truth, love, and everything. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. Amen. Let's just give. Guys, that's awesome. I want to ask my ministry teams to come forward and I don't want you to be distracted while they're getting up here but they're coming up here for a reason some of you as I was sharing today that you realize like oh yes I am believing that stinking thinking there are some things that the enemy has told me that I just took and I ate of it and it's become my identity and God says I don't want that to be who you are and so they're here just to pray with you to speak God's words and life over you so when I go to dismiss you, I just want to encourage you. Even if you have to wait a few minutes, sometimes we got to line up, and, but it's worth the wait. Just like I needed that bishop to come and put his arm around me and say, that's not who you are. That's what they're here to do. And um, if you're one of the people that said yes to the Lord today, we're just excited that you're in the family of God. And we have a connect card in the, the, the chairs. If you want to take a moment to fill that out and drop it off at the Welcome Center because we have people and pastors that are going to be praying for you because, like I said, tomorrow when you wake up, Satan doesn't go, oh, okay, see ya. No, he, he comes and he will continue to come. But that's why we have each other. And if you're one of our um, guests that were here with us today, we have the Connect card. If you don't mind, take a moment to fill that out and take it to the Welcome Center. We have a little special gift for you. And guess what? Today, we have a gift for everyone. We bought lots and lots of succulents just to bless you, um, to remind you that you're special. And so we ask that you can take two to three. If you've got a, a mom or you got a friend, a neighbor you want to bless, those will be out on the table in the foyer. So I want to encourage you to stop by there and take a few to take with you. We're just so honored that you were here with us today and we want you to have a blessed Mother's Day weekend and enjoy the rest of your day and um, be blessed. Take care. <laughs>